Hello everyone, and if you're not aware, this week is GTC 2022. So it started on March 21st, which is when I am recording this video. You'll probably see it tomorrow on the 22nd. And if you have not yet signed up to attend GTC 2022, it's free. And I've got a link right in the description. So you'll want to do this at least for the keynote. Great, great stuff. I also have a giveaway going for an NVIDIA 3080 Ti, which NVIDIA was kind enough to provide to me. So make sure you sign up for that. You just have to email me a screenshot of one of the sessions that you watched. I have a link to the video in the description that talks about how to participate in the giveaway. I'm gonna talk about the one of the presentations that I saw today, which is applying lessons from Kaggle winning solutions to real world problems. This was set up as a panel. So you can see the panel here. And basically the entire session was these individuals being moderated by Jean-Francois Puget, who I've followed in Kaggle for some time. And I apologize if I, if I mispronounced your name. But they went through a number of topics on this. In particular, is Kaggle really applicable to the real world? I'll tell you the answer. It was yes, and I agree with that. They went through, I'll kind of break this into five categories. Is Kaggle useful in the real world? How is Kaggle different than the real world? Can Kaggle get you a job? Always an important question. Time series and then Kaggle suggestions. If you're looking for quick solutions to how to get ahead in Kaggle, this is definitely not the presentation. This is more talking about applicability of Kaggle to the real world. That being said, I really enjoyed this presentation. It would certainly recommend it. Is Kaggle useful in the real world? When they started to address this, they talked about, are Kaggle models ever deployed? And many of the Kaggle models are very, very complex and are often not deployed, the winning solutions. However, they talked about two cases in particular where they were. And it really comes down to a trade-off. Sometimes companies are looking for relatively simple models that can be easily explained, can be easily implemented in you can literally implement some of these models from first principles in Node.js or some, a language that's not Python or R. And certainly some of the products from NVIDIA for model deployment, TensorRT and others, really do help you deploy these complex models. Dask and Rapids certainly can, can be helpful in this area. So how is Kaggle different from the real world? One of the biggest differences that the panelists touched on greatly is in Kaggle, your metric is set for you. If they say it's RMSE, or if they say it's area under the curve, whatever, that is the metric. Now, in real data science, you get to define the metric because if you're optimizing for the wrong metric, you're solving the wrong problem. And that is something they made a very, very big deal of there. In Kaggle, you will study the metric and learn to exploit it. If you study the metric, if you pick the wrong metric, then you learn to exploit it. And then you have your company send a flawed model into production because you picked the wrong metric and you learned how to exploit it. You're probably looking for a new job. So that's certainly not something you're rewarded for in the real world, but you are in Kaggle. Can Kaggle get you a job? They talked about, it really depends on the company. Some companies may not have ever heard of Kaggle. And now if you are wanting to pursue the latest and greatest technology and the hiring manager has never heard of Kaggle, that might be a warning sign to you because especially in this white hot market, you are interviewing the company just as much as they're interviewing you. The Kaggle community can also be helpful in getting a job because you're posting messages and getting replies and interacting with all levels of expert. It's really a great way to learn new techniques. 
And I am a hiring manager, and I will tell you that I do take Kaggle seriously. If some, it, it, gives you, it gives me something to talk about with the individual. Now, I realize some things in Kaggle are oversimplified versus the real world. Data cleanup is one that is mentioned. I mean, you're given your data, and, and that's kind of it. You don't have to figure out, do you need more? You, you can't get more. But I will say, if somebody tells me that they scored high on a Kaggle in an interview, I want to talk about that. I'm quite curious, and I want to know what techniques that they use. To me, this is somebody who is passionate about the technology and had to learn a lot of new technologies to do this. Time series was discussed, because Kaggle has a unique way of handling time series. I have not personally entered a time series competition, but you have to submit your model. It's not like you're sending the CSV for evaluation. Like, so it's, it's certainly done as a kernels competition. And they feed you the data gradually so that you're not leaking data from the future. And there was some discussion around how realistic that is versus the real world. They did get into some Kaggle suggestions. Some good, some not so real world, but would help you in Kaggle. Certainly, you can study the metric. If they're using MAE or RMSE, certainly figuring out the mean and median of the, the target data set can teach you to exploit and post-process some of that data to, to help your score. Not something that would be advisable at all in the real world. And validation of models, that is critical in Kaggle. You'll notice that more and more really advanced Kagglers, they just don't need lots and lots of submissions all the time to really validate their data. The data has to generalize well from what you cross-validated to the public leaderboard and ultimately to the private leaderboard, which you've got one shot at and you can't adjust and that determines whether you win or not. So the cross-validation and holdout is good because with cross-validation, you're getting results on all of your data. That can give you a very good idea. And they mentioned just getting excited about small natural variation changes. So you make a small change and it increases your score. Well, that's, that's not time to declare victory on the Kaggle just yet. And if you are making incremental changes based on that leaderboard, then you're gonna potentially overfit the leaderboard and have some other problems. So that's my overview of the session that I watched the first day. I am completely going to be glued to my monitor tomorrow with a keynote watching Jensen talk about just whatever, whatever he wants to talk about, I will be listening there. It's pretty much the future of AI because NVIDIA has come to this, really to the inner core of companies that are dealing with deep learning and AI.